God's good. All the time. Uh, and one Sunday morning after church, a mother commented, and the dad, and the mama, mama said, that choir. Oh, I can hear you. Well, I keep talking. I thought I had to turn it Never tried it again. There you go. Uh, one, day, one Sunday morning after church, the ride home, the mother said, that music was absolutely awful. The father said, that sermon was boring and too long. And the little seven-year-old daughter said, well, what do you expect for a dollar? <laughs> oh, ain't got good. All the time. We started last week. I got all mixed up class brothers with him. And when we first saw it, the class that y'all really played because you didn't come in with him. And when I saw your brother, I'm thinking. <laughs> Something's different. <laughs> yeah, y'all yeah, look a lot alike. Y'all look like y'all could actually be twins with the several years between you. Yeah. <clears throat> y'all definitely got to go on now. Uh, all right, here we go. Yeah, well, I went in to see my, my stepmom before the surgery, and she looked at me and she kept staring at me, and it kind of got me uncomfortable. And, and Daddy said, Don't you know who that is? She says, Yeah, but he looks so much like you. <laughs> And I told him, I said, well, Daddy doesn't get blessed the older he gets, don't he? <laughs> Your story tell like <laughs> My brother said, yeah, I don't like Daddy when he was 17. You don't like Daddy when he's 78. Okay. <laughs> get your Bibles out. Luke chapter 5. We're going to finish where we started last week. Luke chapter 5. God is so good. All the time. All the time. God is good. God is good. I mean, just this week, Satan has played with your mind and told you that you were not good enough to serve God. Don't raise your hands. How many this week has heard that, that you just have too bad of a past for God to use you? Don't raise your hand. How many has heard you're not talented enough, or you're not old enough, or you're not young enough, whatever it is, all those what we call uh, the never lies. Amen. You'll never make it. You're never good enough. You never, never... Never, 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 never. What we're going to talk about, we started last week talking about leaving Neverland. We're going to finish it today. Don't we, we have a funeral today. The visitation is at 1. Funeral's at 2. Uh, Lola Lee Bennett, she died Monday. And so uh, uh, we're going to have her funeral here today. She ought to be praying for the family. It's never easy, ever easy, but God's always got this. Amen. And I have discovered that no matter how bad the pain of loss, God's comfort is always greater than the pain. Amen? Amen. All right. So here we go. Leave it never land. Uh, Luke chapter 5. Stand for the reading of the word. Luke chapter 5. Again, verse 1. And it came to pass, and as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake in Nazareth, and he saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draw. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great bulk through the fishes, <coughs> and their net break. <coughs> and they beckoned to their partners, which were another ship, that should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that it began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a simple man, O Lord. For he was astonished at all that was there, and all that ever hit him, at the drought of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, and their partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Let your hands this way, ask God for a special touch. And the morning, God, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you for your ever-present, ever-powerful word. God, we can do nothing on our own, God, but with you, God, we can do all things. And, Lord, we know, God, that you have the power and the authority, Lord, to do whatever we need. And, Lord, we can take your word. We've got nothing else to hold on to. We can hold on to your word and know that we have got an anchor. I ask you right now, Lord, to bless us, to anoint us, 
to use us in a very powerful way today. Now, we're all going to say our last week. Let's all say the Lord's Prayer together. Ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You've got a hand clap of praise as you're sitting down. Oh, man. 
believe that I had limited myself, that I can do a whole lot more for myself, a lot more for other people. He said, but you just don't see the goodness that you got and the greatness that you got in you. And it's about time that you stood up and recognized what you could do. And he says, so I come to work and I open up mighty army. And it says the butterfly don't see his own wings, but the world does. He said, that popping between the eyes, he said, when I looked up for mighty army, there you come walking through the door. I said to myself, I ain't getting a computer here today. And so I spent the next few minutes talking. to this guy, my fact, about 30 minutes to an hour, ministering to this guy. And, and then I said, okay, I'll see you later. So where are you going? So I'm going to Best Buy. He said, we got computers here. I said, no, but I don't want this one. I said, I didn't come here for a computer. I came here for you. Praise God. Isn't God awesome? All the time. All the time. So, so see, see, remember this now. You might not see it, but Jesus sees our potential. Here he is. He sees Simon. Simon means a reed, which means he was always blown around by public opinion. He was always, you know, everybody was getting to him. Anytime somebody would say something, he would kind of change his ideas back and forth. He never could really rely on him because his beliefs changed with the pressure. Anybody here like that? Your beliefs change with the pressure? Wow. And so he said, you're not going to be like this. So he says, I'm going to change your name to Peter, which means a rock. One who will be strong and steadfast in his Lord and Jesus. One who will be strong in his commitment to Jesus. So this whole journey, this was the start of a journey. Somebody say, I'm starting a new journey today. Say something, tell somebody that. I'm starting a new journey today. His whole, this whole thing is the start of a journey where he was transformed from being a reed to a rock. It don't happen overnight. Anybody here uh, ever grew up? How many here were born grown? <laughs> Other than D.C., I haven't seen many. <laughs> D.C. was born with four teeth and a mustache. Amen. <laughs> but D.C.'s first words were big man. <laughs> Amen. Y'all pray for him because his truck's on the side of the road broke down. His, one of those guys missed the truck up because he was going to be here, but he called me at 5 30 this morning and said, Daddy, I'm stuck on the side of the road. I'm trying to, I got I had to bring another truck for him to go to work. And he said, I'm sitting here waiting for somebody to steal the stuff off my truck while I'm waiting for the record. So at 9 30, he still was there waiting. So I said, Son, just chill and, 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 and fix your truck. He said, Okay, Dad. So, so again, though, look, God sees our potential. Watch this now. Watch this. Here we go. Now, now here it is. That was from last week. Watch this. God is searching Neverland. Isn't that cool? God is searching Neverland. He's not necessarily, listen, listen, listen. He's searching, y'all say, say, say Neverland. Neverland. He's looking for people that have been lied to, have bought the lies, have ate the lies, who believe the lies. He's watching them and he's saying, I want to change their life. I want to make a difference in their life. I want to show them then they can be used by, by God. So watch this. Watch this. this. This right here. You see why Peter, why he used Peter. Watch this. Ready? Watch this. I love this. Don't grow weary and well doing for in due season when the time is right. The modern translation is don't grow or don't, don't get heavy. Don't get distressed doing what is right. For when the time comes and the time is right, you will reap if you don't quit. That's what happens to a lot of people. They don't realize that they block their own blessing because they get tired of doing right. They get tired of doing the right thing and they're always getting the wrong thing in return and it just drives them crazy and so they just finally quit. If they had to quit, God would have blessed them abundantly. So don't give up. Amen. So watch this. Watch this. First thing, God is looking for people that will persevere. See, perseverance is greater than ability. Did you know that? I said a lot of people with ability, but they didn't persevere, so guess what? It didn't help. They had all kinds of ability. They could do all kinds of things, but they would not see it, and they would quit before they got a chance to use their ability. I remember when I was coaching the Royal Basketball, and I had three guys who literally, when they would get excited and start jumping, their arms would go that high over the goal. Now, this is 7th and 8th grade now. I'm talking about seniors. They're always going to have to go. And I'd say, fellas, don't you know? And then one of those guys could even sit there and flat foot and jump up on the stage. 
And I said, fellas, don't you know you can dunk a basketball if you can jump that high? And they said, we could never dunk, coach. I said, you could never dunk? He said, yeah, they told us we could never dunk. I said, who told you? I said, I'm watching you. I see your arm going above that. I, back then, I could dunk. I said, I can dunk. I said, if I can dunk, I know y'all can dunk. I can't even touch the net. But back then. And so those guys, it was funny because once they, once somebody took them from the never lies and let them see what was really inside of them and what they really were capable of doing, guess what happened? They dunked. Wow. It's amazing to watch a 15-year-old dunk a basketball. It's awesome. Amen. Especially when I was taller than him. Amen. It was awesome. Watch this. Watch, watch. Watch this. Peter was tired. He had fished all night. And he had caught nothing. The effort failed, but he was willing to go back out and try again. He would persevere. You see, don't believe the never lies. Watch this. Just quit. It's always too early to quit. <clears throat> Listen to me. It's always too early to quit. It's always, look, look, look. It's always, well, I put that, it's always too late to give up. I wasn't going to sleep. I mean, it's always too early to give up. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is awesome. All the time. Maybe there's some humanness right there. Ready? So God is looking for persevering people. I didn't think I looked right when I put it down there. Amen. I love this one. Too tired, too busy, too weak. Wow. Not only is God looking for persevering people, but God is looking for obedient people. You see, one of the greatest faith statements in the Bible that I've ever seen was nevertheless. Nevertheless, not at my word, but at yours, will let down the net. Wow. He's going to be obedient even though his mind tells him there's no fish. Even though his mind tells him we're tired. Even though his mind tells him that it has been fruitless. We're not going to try it. Watch this. Y'all say it, nevertheless. nevertheless. You see, see what it says, watch this. If there's, there's one word you can put in your vocabulary, it's nevertheless. You know why? Uh, in spite of doubt, in spite of discouragement, delusionment, failures of others, personal setbacks, personal failure, I will let down the net. Y'all watch this again. Listen to me. Here's what he's saying. In spite of doubt, discouragement, disillusionment, failures of others, personal setbacks, personal failure, I will let down the net. You don't have to believe the never lies. Amen? Listen. Listen to this. Never let. Look, no excuses. I, I, I keep thinking about back at back at Fountain. It was so cool back at Fountain because uh, I would come out if I saw a problem with the CEO or the or the, 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 the vice president of engineering. Somebody would come to me and say, "David, we got a problem," and that would, I would I'd say, "And you want me to look at it?" Yes, and I would say nothing else. And I would get out there and I would get my paper. I'd get my I'd run my calculations and I would. Figure out not just one solution. I'd figure out two or three solutions. I'd even go back to my office and draw them up. Then I'd come back and I'd say, okay, you said we got a problem. He says, yes, we got a problem. I said, well, here's two or three solutions. He didn't need me to be a minor bird or a parrot to put back the words he told me. We got a problem. Yes, you got a problem. He needed to hear some solutions. Too many of us are problem conscious. We need to be solution conscious. Now I come back and show them one, two, or three. 99% of the time, we didn't even have to go to some kind of whatever to get it all approved. He would just go to the special COO or the vice president engineer. He'd go, I like that one right there. I used to love this word. Make it happen. Amen. Don't be a parent and give them back what they're telling you. Come up with something. Always think about something. When you're having problems, you try to think of a solution instead of that. just all these excuses. Well, I would, but I could, but if only this, if only that, if only, 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 if only. Quit making excuses. Start being obedient to God. So watch, watch this. I love this one. Without God, I could do nothing. 
without God. I can do nothing. Y'all say that. Without God. Watch this now. Watch this. We didn't say it's with God. I can do anything. Without God, I can do nothing. With God, I can do everything because He's my anchor. He's my rock. So watch this. Watch, watch, watch. Humility. God's looking for humble people. Uh, if you got to tell me you're humble, you're not humble. You got to tell me. I need to see it. I can look at somebody and tell they're a Christian, especially if I get around them for a while, they're a Christian. I can tell if they're humble or not. I can tell if they're prideful. I can tell if they're stubborn. How many there can do that? God gives us that ability. So look, if I got to tell you I'm humble, more than likely, I'm not humble. Uh, I had this guy wrote a book. He said, the ten humblest people in the world, how I'm in the top three. Humility, to recognize, here's all humility is, you recognize your need of God. That's it. He said, depart from me. I said, big old fish, he went out there and caught this fish and he come back. He said, wow, depart from me. Because I know I tried it on my own and it didn't work. When Moses was 40 years old, he felt that call of God to deliver God's children from Egypt. And so he thought because of his position that he could take care of it. And so he went and he killed one soldier and buried him. One and buried him because he was doing it on his own. Next day, the Israelites are mad and they're scared of him and said, who do you think you are doing all this? And the man winds up running from Egypt. Banned from Egypt. In the wilderness for 40 years, God takes that king's heart and molds it to a servant's heart. Now he goes back with God. He doesn't want to just feel the call of God. Now he's got God on his shoulder. Him and God are working together. They're partners. And now the whole army is taken down at the Red Sea. Isn't it amazing? difference when God, look, I know God told me, yeah, but is he helping you? Are you doing it on your own or are you doing it my way, your way? You know, uh, I, my favorite song back when I was a teenager, uh, y'all remember Elvis? Uh, he died when I was a senior in high school, I think. I think I was a senior, junior, senior. I mean, all the great ones died then, him and John Wayne, they both died about the same time. Life was never the same after that. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so, so, uh, Elvis sang it, Frank Sinatra sang it. I did it my way. I just walk around singing it all the time. I did it my way. My mom said, Son, you're messing up. I said, Oh, Mama. Or I did it my way. Daddy said, Son, you're going to get better at this. You got to listen to me. I know that, but I did it my way. And then I got saved. When I got saved, they got to church and started working for God. I hear him say, you know, if you did this a little different, it would be better. Or if you listen to God, I'll go, I did it my way. <laughs> and finally, when I was in prayer, and I said, God, I don't understand. What's the problem? And he said, you did it your way. <laughs> Wrong way. <laughs> and so now, I always try to do it God's way. Amen. 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 It may not always be easy, but it's going to be better. Amen. So, so depart from me, uh, I recognize I need you, God. Don't believe the never lies that we can do it on our own. We've got to help help from God. Amen? I'm almost ready. Matter of fact, DJ, you can almost get ready. Matter of fact, go and get your feet moving. Watch this. I love this. <laughs> do you seriously think God can use you? Noah was a drunk, unless he was drunk one time at least. Abraham was too old. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. Leah was ugly. Joseph was abused. Moses had a stuttering problem. Gideon was afraid. Samson had long hair and was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute. If he can use all those people and use them 
mightily. Don't you think he can use you no matter what? Wow. God's looking for visionary people. Christ, after he started talking to Peter, he gave him a vision of, listen, here's his vision. Watch. What he could be. What he could do for the kingdom. He says, do not be afraid. He says, you've been catching fish. But with me, you're going to catch me. See, don't believe it's never lies that God cannot use you no matter where you come from. God can use you. I remember going to pit attention one night, and I went to the general population that night, and I went in, and I was going to go in, and I was going to minister to the guys, and when they see me come in, they normally all gather around and wait to hear what's going on. This day I go in there, and I, and, and I see a bunch of guys over at the corner table. And they're really getting into it. I mean, they're really getting into it. And I said, wow, I don't even need to be here. These guys got it going on. And so I sat down at the table and said, what y'all got going on? And they said, you ought to hear this, man. He's awesome. And so I went to him and said, how you doing, man? I've never seen you here before. He said, I know. I just got here a couple of days ago. I said, you don't even sound like you're from here. Where are you from? He said, I'm from Virginia or somewhere. I said, what you doing here? I don't want me to ask that, but I did this time. He said, well, actually, if you want to know the truth about it, the reason I sound like this is because I'm a preacher. <laughs> and he says, I'm a pastor. I said, and you're in Pitt Detention Center. He said, yep, all the way from Virginia. I said, why are you in Pitt Detention Center if you're a pastor from Virginia? He said, because actually, I thought I could get away with parking tickets. And a speeding ticket. I thought I'd get away with all those. I thought I was a part of those. And he says, so I just didn't pay attention to him. He said, I was going to kind of ride through a ride through a, just a regular check. And when they were checking license, they checked mine and ran it and said, come back and arrest me. He says, I'm a pit petitioner waiting to go back to Virginia to pay for my parking tickets and my speeding tickets. And I said, uh, wow. He said, and I feel kind of foolish right now. And I said, look around you. Then around those guys are so hungry. And he was doing such a good job with them. I said, let me tell you something. I don't want you to feel foolish. He said, why? I said, because what I got you here was not in the best of circumstances. You thought you could get beyond the law, and it can't be beyond the law. They called up with you. said, but even in here, just like Paul. You know where Paul wrote most of the New Testament? He wrote three quarters of the New Testament. You know where he wrote most of the New Testament from? Prison. And so, 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 so here, I told that guy, I said, Paul wrote most of his epistles from the prison. He says, yeah, you got a point there. I said, look around these guys you're touching. They've got them telling me all, all the things that have done so good in the last three days since he had been there. And now they had a 24-hour pastor right there with them. And how some guys said, I don't know how I could have even made it through this place if, if God hadn't sent this man here. Wow. The pastor... From Virginia, in Pitt Detention Center, and thinking that it was all lost, when actually God was using him to answer prayers to some guys who said, I don't know if we can make it if we don't get the right guy in here to help us. Wow. And I left that place, that pastor was pumped. He said, You know what? You're right. God can, look. I said, Look, if God can use a mule, if God can use a rooster, why can't he take you from Virginia and put you at Pitt Detention Center and use you there? He said, you got a point there, Pastor. You go ahead with your bad self. I said, no, you go ahead with your bad self, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that reminds me. That's okay. <laughs> I won't go there. All right. Look. What's this? That day, he left there. On that day, on that shoreline, Peter caught, caught a glimpse of the man he could be in Christ. I never in a million years thought I'd be pastoring. And I know y'all don't believe this, but I really am shy. I know y'all think I'm just pulling the pull leg. <laughs> I'm really shy. I'm not quite as shy as Stephen is, but I'm shy. <laughs> so I see this. 
But God did something in my life. Amen? Look, if he left Neverland, we can too. He launched out into the deep and his life was never the same. Let me tell you something right now. It's time for us to get deep in God. I mean, deep in God. And watch what God called up here, DJ. Deep. Deep. Y'all say deep. 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 He said, well, I'm pretty deep right now. Well, you know, I used to watch and read about Ezekiel's waters, and he kept talking about the waters. He walked in, he got to his ankles, and he got to his knees, and he got to his thighs, and got to his, got to his waist. But the most powerful place he was at is when he got to the water where his feet could no longer touch the ground. When he got in the water over his head, then God could use him the most. you know why? Because as long as his feet could touch something solid, he was fine. But as soon as his feet could no longer touch the ground, he had to trust God. God's got it, yes. God's got it. God's got it. Let's say God's got it, yes. Why don't everybody stand up? God is so awesome. Because God is not 